being on mute. Sorry. Let's start again. We are going to watch. I'll edit this. I'll edit that beginning out. We're going to watch this video of JLR letting us know about. Hang on, I'm just going to mark that. So it's about 17, 40, 17, 40. Edit. Right. I'll edit that bit out before we go anywhere. Sorry about that, I was on mute. I didn't realise. But I'll, I can edit that before I can upload it to YouTube. I know it's on a live book. I'm sorry. Anyway. So, um, because certain things were pricking JLR's ears, the fact that uh, this UCN were doing private searches, wasn't letting anyone know where the searches were. Um, I turned to all these other searches who was there, day, like the Friday and the Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. Sent them all away. Didn't want them, didn't want them there. But then they're putting out a call for volunteers. And when the volunteers turn up at the bowling alley behind back, JLR will tell you. Those are asking them to sign up and then make a donation. I'm thinking, what? You volunteers? If you want to make a donation, you make a donation, but you don't get, you, they think about asking. They can have a bucket there, maybe, with donations on. If you want to make a donation, you add to it, you know what I mean? But you're giving you up your time. So, and they're putting calls out for uh, fuel and tents and even these toilet portal toilets or something like that. I'm thinking, what the hell? Never in my life have I heard of an organisation putting out a call for those sort of things. Never. Right? Well, yesterday, because there's no search going on, right? JLR was just doing his usual searches, background searches on the sites where KT had been. But then later on in the afternoon, he must have got a tip because he's gone to this one place. Right, and he's just parked up, just parked up, hadn't even got out the car. When this guy came over him, he told him to leave, this is private property and all this lot. And he said, well, you know what I mean? Anyway, we're going to watch this and you can eat it for yourself, right? Because he's the best person to say. JLR investigates. Come on in, everyone. JLR investigates the search for for fifteen year old Sebastian. Everyone, come on in. We have to talk. Got to use the platform to bring public awareness to a situation, folks. I urge every single JLR investigates to stay away from the united region navy they are a complete come on very often ever talk about drama but oh boy, oh boy we have uncovered a lot about this cert group that is in in Jacksonville, tennessee everything and creating a problems folks come on in come on in yes stay away from the united cajun navy they are a scam they're scam. They're scam. They're faking. They're lying to the public about their searches. I have received, and I'm a little bit ticked because a lot of you guys know that I've been putting.
all my heart and passion on our end, right? Magnolia has been assisting me. Other people around me have been doing great, phenomenal work. The United Cajun Navy had the police called on yesterday. Their so-called turkey eating site. I was honest, in my car. And this guy who identifies himself as, as Skip Butler runs up my car and tells me to leave immediately or the police. And I said, what do you mean I got to leave immediately? I'm not doing wrong. What's going on? This guy right here. Beware of the guy because there's multiple names. He told me Skip Butler. I named when they were down there in Nashville. He's calling them Skip Guy. He's not one to be filmed. He's the one that is running. He's the man, the United Cajun Navy. They're, they're, they're founder, I guess they're... So we did some research, folks. Well, branches of the Cajun Navy, right? But the United Cajun Navy is an off to Do not like United Cajun Navy at all. They do not. They say they, they manipulate things. They lie. They, 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 they're in it for the money. They're in it for themselves. Well, the guy up here approaches me. And he's, I got to get out of here. He's going to call the cops. I actually left, but I called him a scam artist to his face, and he called the cops. I left, and then I had an interaction with Hendersonville police, professional, totally cool. They were cool, totally cool. You see, he did nothing wrong, whatever like that. Shook all their hands. They actually watched the channel. <laughs> now, some people in the chat are saying another live streamer has had the same situation. Where they did the same thing. These people are evil, folks. He, Todd uh, Terrell, Christopher, name is Christopher Todd Terrell. He has numerous cases of outstanding child support from Louisiana. And the irony of this whole situation is, look on the case logs in Baton Rouge. The guy owes buku amounts of child support. And they're out here using a child, using a child, folks, and pretending they're having searches. Their vice president went on Nancy Grace yesterday and had the audacity to say that spot. Remember that spot where that dog hit at Rockland Creek or Rockland yeah. Recreation Center? Remember that dog spot? Yeah. Their vice president had the audacity and went on to Nancy Grace and say that it was a, a dead homeless man there. It ended up being a dead. There was no dead homeless man. Authorities didn't find a body there lie this guy rolls up this guy rolls up to a bowling alley and tell everyone to sign and check in and make sure you donate 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 just the stress folks i'm a little bit ticked off because they're pulling off a scam and i actually reported them to the local authority these are gypsies these are opportunities these are the type of people these are and you can do your because I did KGB is in with scandals or out there. Their so-called leader has been involved with rack restraining orders and legal problems because organizations in look look up. Do not associate with over there lying to you now had a long conversation with seth rogers last night i 100 support that man support the inner circle of him they are great people they are passionate they are trying to find it and they're actually you know, they want help and i get it but i told him my feelings i told them and they understand and i don't want to make this about me this is supposed to be about sebastian these people are not working with law enforcement. There was no matter of fact, my my honest take, now that I'm looking at it into a, a another person, I think their dogs just false hit. I don't think their dogs found anything. And then they they actually sit in the cut and make all the volunteers go and they they have this organized thing and then they 
start distributing all over their platforms. United Cajun Navy is here to help. Where you know they're actually kind of taking credit online of filing, uh, uh, finding Riley. They didn't find Riley. They didn't find Riley. No, in fact, I came across another YouTuber today. He's actually a diver. He dives. He goes in the water and dives. He's not happy because he was down there with, with Riley Stray and five, you know, five, what is it now? Who was he? News Nation saw him and a couple of his guys right on the side and they just walk, looking at the walking like they do, they've got to make sure what they're going to do is going to be safe. So they're going, can we come in your boat? And they go, no, really, we haven't got the space in our boat. Right? So anyway, when they put out a news clip of UCN, they used they filmed him in the water diving right and they put it together with ucn coverage so that ucn could get the oh look they've got a diver in the water a load of bs it wasn't one of their divers it was an individual Diver. It wasn't nothing to do with UCA. But they used a clip of him in the water along with UCA off their boat. Right? And so this guy put a video out to get and, and he brought this video up here on JLR. He said, This guy here, go sign up to him. He's the one who can say it better than I can. He wasn't happy. This guy was not happy. Right? And um, so there's several people out there. And I've come across today, I was Googling. I wasn't just sitting around doing nothing today like usual. <laughs> no. i come across uh, some articles on the uh, president or whatever of the UCA. And I tell you, it's an eye opener. It took out uh, injunctions or something against people on Facebook for bad mouth thinking. He wanted a restraint, he wanted a protective order or something like that for himself, and so that this certain person couldn't stalk him. And the judge turned it down. I'm thinking, what? And then, to top it off, these are searches, yeah? Searches. Those telling the volunteers to uh, come prepared with uh, waterproofs, right? Because of the rain. And to make sure they've got the proper boots on for the, uh, the snakes, because it's snake season, where the snakes are out. And then they put out this post to dad. Uh, how the world isn't going to be on there. I'm done. I'm going to put it up. I think I've got it on my profile. I'm done. Oh, where are we? Uh, No, I obviously haven't. I thought I did. Perhaps it's on my Facebook. All right, hold on. Oh, God, where is it? It'll be after that one because it's done that one. I remember now. 
Huh? Anyway, so I, mean, I can't find you. I can't find you. Well, I love me, I can't find you. So, they're putting out this telling all volunteers to come prepared, but then they put out a post today stating there would be no search today due to the weather. The weather? What the hell? Are these, are they, is this usually made of sugar? Hmm? Have they been wrapped up in bubble wrap all their flipping life and never had rain hit them? Because that's your job. You're out there in all weathers. As a volunteer, you get volunteers who've been out there in all weathers. Seth has been out there in all weathers for the last four weeks. IMG. Sorry, I meant to say hello earlier. Right? Um, so, what the hell is going on? That's what my opinion was this morning. What the hell is going on? What it is, right? They come in and they're just making out that these big hero searchers who found Riley Strait and they didn't. They didn't find him. Made using other people, like other divers, without his permission, filming him and then using it in with their news people, nation, news nation or whatever, right? I don't think, oh darn, that isn't fair. This is disgusting what they're doing. And so all day I put up a post like, what was it I put up on Facebook now? I put this post up today. And it said, um, oh, I'll show it, yes, please. Oh God. Right. I'm not saying you're a liar. But you're a liar. And my title was, if you know, you know. Meaning, if you know what I'm, who I'm on about, you know. Because they didn't want to say names. Right? And, um, oh, I've got a message. Who was the message I got? What's that? Rookies will look at you as the class. That will be the platform for which is going to meet the world for people who can raise you to well. No, not interested. Not interested. <laughs> anyway, so that was what I put up. And I was, after I'd seen this interview by JLR, and we'll go back to you. Right? So we're going to go back to this and we're going to continue to listen to it, okay? I just want to get this out of the way before anything else, okay? Riley? You know who found Riley? It wasn't them. So this guy here, and I made a clip because there's two. Listen to this. This is wild. I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to show you something here. I called him out right to his face when he can't. Listen. Why don't you want to be live? Why don't they want to be live streamed? Why don't they want to be recorded doing their organization? You know why? Because they're not regulated to do this. They're not the professionals to do this, folks. They're just a ragtag group that came from another state that comes up in here loosely organized with a with a representative of them and then solicit money and donations from people and then try to go out there and say we're searching. They said they're claiming they're doing searches today. But everyone has to meet at the bowling alley where the, the bowling alley where Sebastian and his mom, they're meeting at a bowling alley. You go to bowling alley. You're going to walk down the streets of Henderson searching? No, they're going to do that because they want cameras on them. Media to say, Cajun Navy's out here. Cajun Navy. Boom. They now synonymous with the Sebastian Rogers search. As if they're doing something. They're not doing nothing. I've been here. I've been here boots on the ground. They are pushing the live streamers away. Yep. They don't want you to live stream. It's prohibited. They called the they literally called the police on me. And I'm wrong. And I, I wasn't in no trouble or nothing. Police, they laughed at it. This is frivolous. 
frivolous. He, frivolous. But look at this. Hold on. So I'm just mining in my car, and I see this guy roll up on me. I'm like, all right, there's trouble. So I'm just start recording. We are here at the Shelby Park boat launch in Nashville, and we have our a volunteer from South Carolina who just turned around and looked this way. His name is Skip Park. And now, if you heard that, he Skip Park saying in their own video themselves that he's Skip Parker. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Like, literally, who, who is this guy? Now, look, I'm going to play the actual full clip. You're telling me to get off this property. I'm not property. doing any interviews. I'm asking you to leave this private property, please. This is private property. I'm asking you to leave. Is it your property? I'm asking no, you to leave. No, I'm not going please. please. Why don't you get off the property? The property. How are you going to tell another citizen to get off the property? Shame on you. Why are you scamming people? Why are you scamming people? Why are you scamming people? Why is he scamming people? Who is that guy? I encourage everyone to stay away from them and report them on who they are. They are not doing any searches. They put out these Facebook posts trying to draw people in. It's one of those things like they it's they 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 put these posts and then they say, Oh yeah, we're gonna do searches. They have no searches, folks. And matter of fact, matter of fact, they put on for days that they were gonna go to Rockland, Rockland Recreation Center. Guess what? I called Rockland Recreation Center. Yes. Yesterday, and asked them about any searches on that property. They didn't know what I was talking about. They didn't know what I was talking about. I called the Rockland Center. Look on the look on the sign on the outside. There's a call management. They knew nothing about dogs, nothing about searches on their property. But they, on their own site, was poking out. I have to navigate through federal lands. You need to come through us. We need to do this properly and professionally. They're not working with law enforcement. Law enforcement is not interested in Rockland Recreation Center. They're not interested. But look, look at this guy. This is the vice president who went on Nancy Grace yesterday. You know Nancy Grace. And we yeah. have to listen to the proud foot. And we're going to be going over that Nancy Grace as well. Yeah, right the VP of Cajun Navy, let's clear it up. Isn't it true? This is on federal property that had been closed off. It was a hurricane site earlier. Tornado. It was also, yes, Tornado. thank you. And it was also near railroad tracks, and some homeless people had been living there, and apparently one of them had died. And we believe that is what the dogs were hitting on. Is that correct? Yeah, all of the above is correct. Look, now please tell me. Please, someone tell me. Right? How does a homeless person bury himself? If that was a human bone they came across the other day when they first did that search on this Saturday. Right, not on the on on the, on the Friday, on the Saturday. If that was a human bone, right, that should have been investigated. Whether it was Sebastian or not, right, and it should have they should have looked into who it could have been. Because I've never in my life heard of a homeless person dying. And being buried where he died. I've heard, I've heard of homeless people dying and then being took off by the EMC, emergency medical, whatever, or over here, the, uh, the ambulance people or police, you know what I mean? I've heard of that. But I've never heard of a homeless person burying another homeless person where they died. Never. I've heard of a homeless person dying. The homeless people 
literally writing your mother's shoes, his clothes, and all that lot. But I've never heard of them burying one, or them even burying themselves. So I'd like to know what that was that they found, that bone, apparently, that they found. I'd like to know if they did an investigation into that. And if there was someone missing, could be another person that's missing. Been missing a few years, maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe an adult has been missing a few years. Unless they investigate that, then they're never going to know. And I think that's disgusting that they didn't even check it out. Because it's got nothing to do with Sebastian. Who, I don't care, it's another person. That person has family. Well, I should hope they've got family. You know what I mean? Now, if there's a person buried there, right? Surely they should find out who it was. Anyway, let's go on. And we did not uh, gain access to the property. It had already been open when we got there. I'm not sure how uh, entry was gained, but but yeah, all everything above it that you said was correct. It's not correct. They didn't find a homeless body on there. That that dog didn't hit a homeless body. The coroner or didn't. No police never came there to retrieve no body. No one reported that. There's no evidence of that. There's nothing. We were out there. They didn't find anything at that site. He lied. The vice president of Cajun Navy lied to Nancy Grace to her face. It find a homeless person there at all. It find a homeless person there. Who is this guy? So he identifies as himself as Skip Butler, he tells me. And there's some articles out, out there with the riot. He just came out of nowhere because if you Google him with connected with Cajun Navy, he only pops up suddenly from here, Nashville on Riley, right? He only pops up on not dude, these people are gypsies, and I'm it's true, it does only pop up from Nashville. I've, I've googled, believe me, I've been googling all day. <sighs> Saying it, and they can come at me for defamation, whatever. We're taking the truth, we'll go discovery. I got the receipt, I got the receipt. But what's even crazy is this guy, this guy, Todd Terrell, Todd Terrell, who's down in Louisiana, is putting out as if, if oh, they're the Cajun Navy's here in full force. No, they're not. They sent this guy up named Skip Butler. He might even be Skip Parker because the Cajun Navy identified him in another clip as Skip Parker. So who is he from South Carolina with an airboat? What the hell are you going to do in an airboat here? So he... He goes in the back of a bowling alley and, and parks his vehicle with a big giant airboat. As if they're about to do some sort of water searches and stuff like, no, they're not. And if they do anything, it's all for show. Yeah. So I know some people might say, oh yeah, they are out there, whatever. It's all for show. You know what? They put a post last night. I'm going to show you this. This is ridiculous too. This is crazy. They put a post last night where they talked to Burton Skaggs or uh, Burton Skaggs, one of a, a local reporter. I like his stuff. I like his stuff. And he tweeted out. He said, I've been in contact with the United Cajun Navy. Now, stressing point, we're talking about United Cajun Navy. There's multiple Cajun Navies. There's actually some good Cajun Navies out there. Cajun Navy 216. They call that out the United, United Cajun Navy. But he said, I've been in contact with the United C C Cajun Navy. They will be updating after searches are complete as to, a not, as to not attract crowds, which might overstimulate their canines. That's crazy, That's folks. Yes. So basically what they're saying is they're going to have secret searches but they don't want anyone to know their searches because they don't want to disrupt their canines. And then afterward, they'll tell you about the searches. Oh, we searched here, we searched here, but we can't tell you where the searches are. You can't live stream the searches. These are all on federal land all over the place, right? 
Well, yeah, Rockland Recreation Center is federal land. It is federal land. But guess what? There's not much land and there's nothing there. Authorities don't want anything there. So where else are you going to search? Where else is the Cajun Navy really going to search? Where are they going to search? But anyway, this Todd Terrell guy, Christopher Todd Terrell, his real name, the dude has warrants out for him for child ch delinquent on child support. $12,423.80. Yes, and I Googled it today and I found that information out as well. 80 cents, delinquent in Baton Rouge, a parish. I'm going to get this guy's mugshot. Cajun Navy, 216. It's hard to see with the glare. Her. I did put a post up today on my Facebook page saying, the two YouTubers that I know of down there, who you, who you, United Cajun Navy, do not want to piss off, is JLR Investigates and Dolly Vision. Because they are all over you like a rush. Especially JLR. He's all over them now like a rush. They've got his back up and that's it. He's not letting go. Here, hold on. Let me show you. They pretty much said, this is Cajun Navy 216. You always have got the ones that are out in it for the right reasons. And then unfortunately, you have the other ones. We will never unite with wolves impersonating as sheep. Good wolf always prevail. And someone respond, are you referring to the United Cajun Navy Army? Are they not legit? It was great they found that missing boy in Nashville, right? They laughed. Ha <laughs> ha. They didn't find him. Workers moved barges out of dock did. Watch the police press conference. It's posted on their page. They're, they're calling out the United Cajun Navy, folks. They're calling out the United Cajun Navy. Do not assist them. I'm, I'm telling my platforms, you are being scammed. If you go out there with them, you're being bamboozled. You're being used for their own do donations. They are using Seth Rogers. Yeah. And then there's they conflicting are. things now, according to Nancy Grace. Who are they there for? Are they there for really the Proudfoots? Because of the way I heard it on Nancy Grace yesterday is as if the Proudfoots contacted them. Is this all a distraction? With them. Is it? It's it's shameful. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm seeing a scan before my eyes. I'm trying to raise the, you know, the red flags. If you're there, pull out your camera and ask them for their credentials. Ask them who they are. Ask them, ask the organizer. If you decide to go and you want to go, and you want to make a difference on finding Sebastian, go up to whoever's running this operation with your camera and ask them who they are. Ask them to provide you identification. Ask them to provide you credentials on who they are. They remind me of those people when hurricanes hit and disasters hit and they come in there and they try to say, donate money up front and we'll fix your roof and we'll do this. That. That's who they remind me of, these gypsies that, you know, fake the work. It's a fake. It's a facade, folks. And it's my duty to tell you people this. Now, you can believe me. You could choose to believe me. You could choose not to. You could say, oh, I'm just butthurt or whatever because I, I can't live stream. No, I'm out here trying to find a kid. I'm out here trying to make a difference. I'm out here using my platform to bring awareness to this, this kid that's out there missing. And trust me, we don't need to live stream. That's not it. We were just doing. Right. I feel bad for Hi Jimmy. I tell you something, gal. Yeah, to be honest with you, I did. Terry. I thought that was the real. I didn't realise they were scammers. When I heard that the United Cajun Navy was coming in to help. I thought, thank God, 
we've got someone coming in now to help the father. Because up until that day when Jay Allard did the interview with him outside that park and then walked around with them, right? Right up until that day, it was just the father, a colleague of these that he works with, and some other lads, three of them doing a search every day. Right? So when I heard, um, I believe it was on the Friday, or Friday night, Saturday morning, that Cajun, United Cajun Navy was coming in. I thought, great. And then the father said, said put that post out about um, leaving to the Cajun Navy. You know what I mean? I thought, okay. Let them do what they must. But what got me was the fact that they didn't want anyone. I can understand in one way. But you see, if anyone is filming, like I remember one, I think it was on the Friday. It was Friday. Friday or Saturday when they're doing the search, right? And uh, I think it was on the Friday actually. And there's one woman there, and she works for some other station, news station, a YouTube channel as well. She's a moderator. And she said, uh, can you just, he said, don't worry. He said, if you find anything, I'm not going to come up there. I will stand back because I will not film it. I will not film it if there's a body. No. Right? If it's just an item of clothing, maybe. Right? Exactly, they didn't find them. That, but they taken the place for that. You know what I mean? They've taken the place for that and it's wrong. No one should be taking the place for that. From what I heard, it was um, when some they moved the boats out of the way. That's how they found the body. It was only one of the boats or something. Um, uh, and it wasn't even the mother and the stepfather that got in touch with them. It was Seth. Seth was the one who got in touch with them. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. You know what I mean? It wasn't the mother or the stepfather. It was Seth. And you'll hear that in a minute. I'm, I'm going to show you the... I'm going to take this down. Because this... I feel sorry. He is pissed off now. He's really pissed off. He's so angry. And I would be too. Because they are scamming. They're coming on a case where there's been a young lad, autistic, a young lad, been missing four weeks. And they're taking, they're scamming everyone. They're taking their pee out of it. They haven't done no searches. If cameras have been on them, oh, they've got the boats out in the water. And that's it. They haven't done no searches. Cross I they've called the search off today because of rain. You know what I mean? They, t they told everyone on Saturday that they was told by law enforcement to stand down. To stand down. They wasn't. They wasn't told by law enforcement. Because what was they doing on the Monday? Oh, they was doing their private searches. But there wasn't. Then Tuesday came. And still nothing. Wednesday came and they're getting people to sign up as volunteers and have a donation of them. Then today they're supposed to go out today, they didn't. So since Saturday, that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. What day are we on now? Are we on Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday. I think we're on Tuesday. 
Yeah, but like Sunday on Tuesday, three days they have done nothing. Nothing. Right? And even on the Nancy Grace show, that guy who's supposed to be the organizer, the VP or whatever of UNC, he said he didn't want YouTubers there. And Nancy said, Yeah, I do. I want to see them YouTubers there. It's about, and then he's backpedaling because he's going, Well, they can video it so then they can edit it. And Nancy's grass going, No, no, I want to see it all. You know what I mean? She do not want things hidden from her. And it's true. You've got to be. Some people are so annoyed now in life that with the authorities, with the law enforcement and all these other organisations not being so open. They want you to be, they want everyone to be open. What you got to hide? If you got nothing to hide, why why be so secretive? You can't just say, I oh, this like I've been fan, I'll take the credit for it. No, don't work like that. So I'm going to try and find it again now. Um Oh God. Did I put it on my Facebook? I don't know what I've got on Facebook. I'm Right, what I have got here, this is what Cajun Navy, six, Cajun Navy 2016 has nothing to do with United Cajun, Cajun Navy. You've always got the ones that are in it for the right reasons, and then you have, unfortunately, have the other ones. We will never unite with wolves and personating sheep. Good will all, always prevail. Right? And he's got it here. This was a post they put out. Right? Cajun Navy 2016 is no way involved with the Riley Strain search. That wasn't involved with that. Right? And then he's gone, don't be confused. There are several groups that use the Cajun Navy name. Check the pages in info to see the timeline as to when the groups were formed. There was no formal Cajun Navy groups formed during Katrina. So during Katrina, there was no formal Cajun, Cajun Navy groups. One thing our organisation is, and that is honesty with people. Right? Oh, God, where is it? Is it honest? Let's see if it opens up. Yeah. Here. Right, if you can see it. Can you see? Right, I don't know if you can see it, but hold on, I'll get this off. Right. It says, it gives them the date they started. This was started in August the 16th, 2016. Right. So they've got the receipts there to say when they started. Now, I didn't get time to go and check on receipts for UCA because, to be honest with you, I was getting really peeved off with them. With everything I was reading about them, I was getting really peeved off. This is, um, this was. Oh God, Dolly Vision, right? He spoke about them as well. And that was me, I said, the two YouTubers who don't piss off United Cajun Navy. And they are JLR Investigates and Dolly Vision. They are all over you like a fecking rash. Now this one here, right? I'll show you this. This is a diver 
right? Who's going up the this train? What? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. This is a, a guy who's a diver, right? And you listen to what he's got to say. You listen. Hold on. So, Jason, what are you doing? When we were down in Nashville, Tennessee, Ronnie, Brothers on Water Recovery, um, Integrity Canine Services, and myself were up on the bank doing our due diligence, checking out the ground, checking out vantage points, looking into the waterway. We were approached by the TikTokers and News Nation. They asked us why we were there, what we were doing, what our game plan was. We told them, and then they asked us if they could come on Ronnie, Ronnie's brother on recovery's boat. And Ronnie said, well, we really don't have the room. We're trying to do our search. Um, they were very persistent, and they asked if well, could the, they meet us at the boat ramp we were going to be deploying from, and we exchanged contact information. We deployed from the boat ramp that we went to, Shelby Park boat ramp. We're doing our search. They, We did our search, then we looked at the vantage points, found out where he possibly could win in at, right? We go back to get our dive gear. They're at the boat ramp. They end up on the boat, you know, no harm, right? Um, they gave us some information for Riley's dad. And then we went back with the cameraman and the man from the Mr. Mr. Flag, the Cajun Navy, was present on the bank, ironically, right? Um, he was not there the entire morning when we were there. But, you know, he could have been anywhere else, right? So, just an uneasy feeling that we got. So, I'm just going to play this clip from a different news company or news station. Watercraft. That's Flag from Cajun Navy, right? He's saying we have several watercraft. What you're seeing is, is the cameraman from News Nation. You got Ronnie operating the boat. You got the canine and Integrity Canine Services, correct? And then they're filming this, portraying this, it's Cajun Navy. So as they orchestrated everyone coming out, supposedly, right? And then you have this. They went missing and the flow rate has significantly reduced as well. So you got him talking a bunch. I got to be careful what I play and don't play for copyright reasons. It is a relative. Yeah, me, Integrity Scanline uh, Services. It was, but... And you got Ronnie Operating Boat, the cameraman, and we're getting ready to deploy, right? Well, that's my next question. When you say that the river's down, is that helpful? Because there's presumably more embankment that you could see. So they go on a spiel, yada, yada. And they go on. And then she Excuse says. Me, I'm just looking at the pictures of divers in the water. I understand. Divers. Started, uh, plural, right? Saturday. Where do you even begin diving? Like, what is it? It's kind of common sense on where you would start and searching and diving. And then she says, why would you plant that flag? The flag is there, so I don't get ran over by a boat for the second time of my life. It's not planting a flag. That flag's for me, so I don't get ran over. Um, it's kind of common sense. They found the debit cards, credit cards right there at the location, right? Um, so we just want to clear the area because we're not getting hit any hits on sonar or with the dog. Um, she goes on to ask him some questions that he can't answer about the dog, about me, or about Ronnie and the boat and what we're doing there, why we would plant that flag. And the entire time we're there, you got News Nation, Cajun Navy planting all this information, and they're just running with the story, running with whatever. And then we all just thought, oh, well, it is what it is, correct? Just let it be. And then I see this video come out. Google person out there that has been following JLR Investigates to stay away from the United Cajun Navy. They are a complete scam. And I don't come on very often ever talking about drama. So if you listen to this man's story, he's going to explain it 150 times better than what I ever could. Um, I'll have the link to his video in the description. Check him out. He's spitting 100% truth. So you got News Nation and Cajun Navy, for whatever reason, are like this. And they're painting narratives, talking about the river, talking about Cajun Navy bringing out boats and all this stuff. And at the end, if you watch the live, um, like the debriefing when they... Riley's poor family is up there putting their hearts out, right, to continue to let everyone know. And then you have Mr. Flag at the very end say, 
if anyone's open to an interview tomorrow, get in contact with them. And then the whole spiel about the case that this man is working on, check it out. So we were baited by Cajun Navy and News Nation, and then they used that footage and other volunteers for their narrative to push whatever it is they're pushing. Um, Cajun Navy is a 501c3. So it helps support their little cause. And then all of a sudden, Cajun Navy is working on all these other missing person cases. I want to say I speak for myself and me only. But, you know, there's other scuba diving channels out, out there. We all may not get along. Right. So you got that guy's back. He was not happy about that. Right. Well, hi, Julian. Nice to see you. Um, I don't know. Uh, I know for a fact it was said I've got into people. And you're here in a minute. Oh, hold on. I'll play that interview now. Just got to find it again. Right. Let's find it. Um... Oh, God, go to YouTube, I know. Christ. Thought I had it up there. All right, hold on. Go to home. All right, and where is it? What is it? It's called News Nation. Oh, God. I'm just going to show this clip. Once I've got this done, I will be talking about the answer grace because, oh my God, I was spitting teeth when I watched that last night. What am I doing? No. What am I doing? News. News. Nice. Where was it? Where is it? It is somewhere. Let's just look. Click on that. Right. Here we are. Right. Now this is. I'll put it on pause for a minute. Hold on. Right. Now, this is News Nation, and please, this is so heartbreaking, it is. I can't even get the words out when I see that father, I can't. And there's two people who knew something, whether they'd done something or something happened, and they move their body or what they know something i don't care what anyone says they know something so we're gonna listen to this so if, you, if you're a woman and you're like me make sure you got your tissues by the side of you Search uh, for the team and the concerns about what may have happened to that boy we're joined by seth rogers uh sebastian's father um, Seth, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I, 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 I'm so sorry for everything you're going through. We want to get the word out about Sebastian. Hasn't gotten enough national attention. Um, Sebastian, I want to be clear, was with his mom and stepdad uh, when, when he disappeared. But you're very close to Sebastian. Do you have any idea what may have happened here? I haven't been... I, I don't know. I mean... I got a phone call and a text message that I received after I got off of work stating that I needed to give the stepfather a call. I called him and he was like, Sebastian's missing. Don't be upset or anything, but you need to come to the house. I couldn't. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't seen him in over a month. I've been out here looking for him. Seth, I mean, what did they think happened? I mean, did he just 
I mean, could he really have just walked away like that? It just, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense. His car, his shoes were still by, were still by the front door. His switch was there. His phone was in the kitchen. It just didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I still can't figure it out. I've been looking everywhere, been handing out flyers, been just trying to keep up hope. And I've reached out to him. We've got to keep hope. For him, we've got to keep hope. We've got to keep that hope that this lad is out there somewhere and can come home to his dad. United Cajun Nation to sit there and see if they will help me. And they answered my call. Yeah, one thing I couldn't understand is why. See, it was he. It was a father that reached out to the United Cajun Navy. Not the mother or the stepfather. It was his father, Seth Rogers. They were telling people not to search at one point. I mean, the, the shift went to the landfill. It was this investigation, and they're telling people not to search. I couldn't make sense of that. I mean, it made me want. Do you have any indication that investigators may know that something bad happened here? They haven't told me anything, and they told people not to search, but I've been searching since that Monday. I can't just sit around and not do anything. I've got to find my son. Yeah, I understand. I would be doing the same exact thing as you, and I think everybody uh, around America would be, and their their hearts go out to you. Have Have you talked to Sebastian's mom, uh, stepdad? You mentioned you had that conversation when when they said, you know, he's gone missing. But have they been able to give any more information? I haven't spoken to them for at least two weeks. They have, they're not talking to me. There are reports that they have packed up an RV and left, left the house that Sebastian disappeared from. Any idea why they would do that? I have no idea. I have no information. They weren't talking to me, so I was out here trying to find my son. Do, do you feel that they were taking good care of him? I've got information made. from podcasts that they were showing that horrify me. At, what do you mean? I mean, were they on podcasts or? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I know this they is were, upsetting, but I just want to understand. They were going on podcasts and it was like, it's supposed to be about Sebastian. They wanted to talk about themselves. I don't get that. This is, we need to get Sebastian's face out to everybody. Have them looking for Sebastian. This isn't about me. It's not about his mom. It's not about his stepdad. This is about Sebastian. Yeah. He needs to be found. Have they been searching at all? I mean, I know you're out there right now. Have uh, have his mom and stepdad been out there too? No. Nope. I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. I haven't seen them. And they've not been where I've been handing out flyers or searching. So I couldn't tell you what they've been doing. I mean, Seth, you know, I'm glad I'm glad we have the picture up. He looks like such a young, a nice young man. Um, and, and I mean, kind of would he ever leave barefoot? I know that's something that's perplexed some people. Um, and even people who have if, children on the autism spectrum have been perplexed by that. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. It does not make any sense. If he knew knew he was going to go out walking or anywhere in the yard or whatnot, he would put on socks and shoes. He had a horrible experience as a child with fire ants. He learned. It's always socks and shoes or at least something on your feet to protect you from what's on the ground. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's. Right, hold on. <laughs> I can't see anything. My eyes have gone more blurry. Sorry. Right, but that father just gets me every time he talks. It just he just gets me to me because that is a father.
who's in pain. He's in pain. He wants his son. You know what I mean? He wants his son. He wants his son home. And he's out there. And then you've got these people. See, UCN coming in and making a shit show of this. And I said it. I shouldn't have said it, but I said it. And I'm so angry because of that. I'm so angry because precious time has gone. Sunday, Monday, and today, three days has gone where no search for Sebastian has gone on. Nothing has gone on for Sebastian. Nothing. Right? And then you've got the pet, the stepfather and stepmother. Why? Oh, yeah. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. Why? I haven't forgotten about them. Why? First of all, I heard the podcast. Right? I heard the podcast. And I thought, are they serious? Can they not tell? Is there any more lies they're going to tell us? Can they not? You know what I mean? As the father said, and we've said it for a few weeks now, it's all about them. The first interview they ever did, they didn't mention that lad's name once. Then the second time, they wouldn't come on showing their faces. They had that hands, look, work together, were holding hands. Creepy. and. Again, I think they used his, they started to use his name. But I did say, in my life, when we watched that first interview, because it came in four parts, I said, you watch. If they do it in your life, they will be, they'll call his name out more. They'll say his name more. And they will add to the story. Right? They'll add. I'm sure as well, they did add. They added to the story. But they wouldn't do it where you could see the faces because they knew the bloody language experts would be watching them. And that's why they did that one where it was just showing their hands. And then they did some other lives, right, on other YouTubers. And one was on Smiley. Smiley's will. Don't you think one knows Smiley? If you don't, I'll put a link. A link will be in the description. And um, I sat there watching that. And I'm thinking, slowly, call them out on their BS. You know what I mean? Because my son said to me, why don't you have a mum, mum? And I said, hey, I'm, I'm the pebble in the ocean. Compared to some of these YouTubers, I'm just that pebble in the ocean, <laughs> right? I said, and B, if I if I had a big platform, right, I would tell my viewers, give us the questions. I will not block any questions. Just put them up. I will ask them. I wouldn't have cared what that question was. Those questions would have been asked, right? I wouldn't have been going through them. No, 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 no. Uh, unless I was repeated, that's the only time I wouldn't ask a question if they repeated the question. If it had already been asked and answered, I wouldn't ask them again. Because I wouldn't like them to cringe too much. Anyway, so they, we've all picked up on some things off that interview. And then they did another interview with another YouTuber, but this was in their home. And uh, it was showing their faces. And I swear to God, I just wanted to. And I was watching it on my TV at the time. I was what I'm going to have to stop watching YouTube on my TV. Especially when it comes to them parents. Because I feel like putting my hand through the TV. I do. I really feel like putting my hand through the TV. That's how mad they get me. That's how angry I get with them. 
right? Because I said today in the comment, I said, someone put a post up on some Facebook page, and I put, if you tell the truth, you don't add on. You don't. You don't need to add on if you're telling, telling the truth. Right? So, at every interview they have done, either on a news channel one or a YouTuber's, they have added. And they didn't let me down again with Nancy Grace. They didn't let me down. Right? But I applaud Nancy Grace because <laughs> what I took from this interview, right, was the fact that February oh, 26, Monday morning. Right, what I took from this interview was, did, they, did you watch this interview, anyone? If you're on Twitter, put it in the comments, yes. And if you did, what did you take from it? If you're on YouTube and you've watched that interview, what did you take from it? Apart from the BS, I noticed he was letting Katie answer the question. And he wasn't doing the, the I, I'm the man, I'm going to talk thing. I'm protecting my wife, so I will do the talking. You know what I mean? He wasn't doing none of that. And I thought, oh my Lord. He knew that if he just on on that show, being like he has been on all the other lives he's done and all the other interviews he's done, Nancy would have tore into him. Now, I want to see if she doesn't a, a video about this interview. I'd like to see her uh, uh, her views on that interview, if you get what I mean, and what she took from it, because she was taking notes. She was taking notes. So, I'm going to watch this interview. I will stop it. When I see BS coming out of the mouths, I will stop it. No, I won't. Because if I stop it every time BS comes out of their mouths, then we'll not, we'll not get anywhere because I'll constantly be hitting that stop button. But I will be stopping it during. If you want to see the interview without all the commentary, I'll put the link is in the description. Well, the link to Nancy's page is in the description. Get the book. Here you go. 6 a.m. From everything we can tell, that is the moment that Sebastian's mom and stepdad realize he's gone. For just one moment, imagine that. You go in your child's room where you find your child every single school day morning and you wake them up, but at 6 a.m., he's not there. Can you imagine what must have gone through their minds? First of all, I want you to hear what his bio mom, Katie Proudfoot, says. Listen. When I woke him up for school, he wasn't there. I took a second and walked through the house looking for him in case he'd gotten up and was trying to get breakfast or something because he did that sometimes. Um, about three minutes in, give or take, I was on the phone with my husband. I said, I can't find him. Um... He said, what do you mean you can't find him? I said, he's not in the house. Can't find him. Where is he? And in the last days, we learned that the official law enforcement search is actually scaling back. This as TikTokers and YouTubers are flooding the area, conducting their own searches. Listen to Eric Craddock, Chief Deputy, Sumner County Sheriff's really wanted to come to the community and ask for your help. We need you to search your properties every day, morning and night. Uh, if there's a shed or a crawl space or up under your mobile home or a tarp that's in your yard, check it every morning and check it every night. <clears throat> Look for any details that something has been disturbed. 
Uh, if there's a shirt that was there today that wasn't there yesterday, notify us. You can really help us by searching your own property twice a day. Uh, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off and we really need your help to ensure that he is uh, brought home safely. We are trying to determine what happened when this young boy, an autistic young boy, seemingly walks out of his own home in the middle of the night, we think, barefoot. How did that happen? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories and on Sirius XM 111. We've read a lot online. We've seen a, a lot of theories, a lot of speculation. But let's start with what we know to be true. Joining me right now, an all-star panel. But first, I'm going to go to two special guests joining us, Katie and Chris Proudfoot. This is Sebastian's biological mother and his stepfather who their home with Sebastian when he goes missing to both of the Proudfoots. Thank you for being with us. I want to go straight back to those missing. Miss Proudfoot, I understand that the day before, which would have been Sunday, if I got the information correct, that you guys went uh, out, you went to dinner, you went to somewhere, I believe you said BJ's, where he had a, quote, colossal popcorn. Then you yes, came home that night, and around 9 p.m., you tell Sebastian to go to bed. He says, okay, he goes to his room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That night, I understand from previous statements you've made that you went to bed around midnight. Is that correct? It is. And to you, Mr. Rose Proudfoot, did you also go to bed at midnight or after? No, ma'am. We went around, we went to bed around the same time as we were on the phone together. And was um, not home. please excuse, please excuse any questions. I'm simply trying to find out more about that night. Do you two sleep in the same bedroom? He wasn't actually in the home at all that weekend. Ah, you were not home. No, okay, so where were you, Mr. Proudfoot? I was uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, how far away? Please, on Twitter or X, on YouTube, let me know what you believe. If you believe he was at work, it won. No, if you believe he was in that home, their home, hit one. And if you believe he was in Memphis, hit two. Because I heard, I think it was last night or this morning, that apparently he left the home. In one of the interviews he gave, and I was trying to find it. They said it was in one of the first interviews they gave, and I couldn't find it. Um, that he said he left from not work at 9 p.m. Now, that would make sense because Seth said that when he went to work, right, he would always go on the phone to his wife and talk to his wife while driving down. Nine till 12 is three hours. Pretty quick. You know, traffic on the road that time of night. So, yeah, it could get down there for five o'clock. You know what I mean? So, if you believe he was at home, at the home, put a one. If you believe he was at Memphis, put a two. Why is that? Um, three hours and 37 minutes from doorstep to doorstep. And what were you doing in Memphis? Working. Where do you work? I'm currently was working at the St. Jude Hospital. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with St. Jude's. You said you were working there. Are you no longer working there? Right now, that's up in the air. Well, so where is he working then? Because apparently, they left the family home the other day after two uh, 
May, I think, or whoever, or law enforcement, went to undercover police or whatever, went to their home, and within hours, a couple of hours, those in that, that bag was hooked up to his truck, right, and they left. Now, you listen to why they left when they get there. Well, you've been gone ever since Sebastian went missing, so I understand. When you are home, do you two sleep in the same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Is this a three-bedroom home? Yes, ma'am. Uh, where is your room as it relates to Sebastian's room? It's on the opposite end of the house. Um, the master bedroom's on one side and the other two bedrooms are on the other side of the house. Okay, so... Your master bedroom is on one side of the house and Sebastian's room is on the other side of the house. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Now, you have a third bedroom that I believe you keep for your other daughter. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, the other daughter, who does not have visiting rights to, she's put an injunction on that. And he's not likely to ever get visiting rights too, if the mother has her way. Is that Faith? Is your other daughter named Faith? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So where is Faith's bedroom as it relates to Sebastian's bedroom? Uh, it's on. It's in the back back side of the house. Sebastian's bedroom so is in the front side of the house. Okay. So his bedroom is away from Faith's bedroom and away from your master bedroom. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is Sebastian's room on a top floor or a fl uh, floor le a ground level? We have a ranch style house. It's a one and a half store. So everything is hat or flat. And then you have the bonus from above the garage. Okay. So his is on ground floor, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. That morning, was there any sign of a break-in through a window, a front door, a back door, a sliding glass door, anything at all? No, ma'am. Okay. No sign of forced entry. Was anything taken from the home at all? Not that we could find anything. We couldn't find anything missing. I want to circle back to Sebastian's shoes regarding if anything was missing. Do you have a burglar alarm? No, ma'am. Do you have a ring doorbell cam? No, ma'am. Okay. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. Right? Now, we have proof, oh, where was it now? It was, I think it was in a Facebook thing. Someone's got it, and I could find it if I had, if I thought about it. Um, someone said, had they took a polygraph test? And he's come back and he commented, he said, we have both took the test. And it came back clean, sort of thing, right? And now he's just sitting there saying he hasn't took one. Well, I knew he hadn't took one. Tell you why? Because he wasn't happy that Katie did a polygraph. He wasn't happy about her doing it. So why didn't he take one? Now listen to this. This is a corker. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts I did not need one excuse me your whereabouts your whereabouts now you're saying you stand in Memphis on a trailer park in your five wheeler is there any proof that you was down there you've got your car 
you trailer because you've been there. Right? <coughs> but did anyone see you that night on the trailer park? Between, I don't know, say 8.30, 9pm till 12pm. Did anyone see you? I doubt it. So, I cannot see the police not saying, oh, you don't need to take one because we know where you was. Unless they've got camera footage to show that you was on that side, physically see you walking around your five-wheeler or something like that, right? Between those hours, I say, half eight, say 9 p.m. and 12 p.m. Then we don't, we don't know you there. Eh? Like you could have said, oh, my car wasn't there at one stage because I went and got a bit of shopping in. Right? Because some of you standable, you need food while you're at work. Right? For the night time when you come home. So that could explain why your car wasn't there for like two or three hours. Yeah? But, otherwise, that isn't a good enough excuse, reason. For the police to say, oh, we don't need to check you. You don't need to do one. I know the father, Seth, volunteered straight away. They had proof where he was. He was at work with so many other people around him. They had proof that he was there. They've got no real proof that you was on that side. So that is BS, calling you out on that. I understand. Miss Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. Those questions out of the way. Ah, was Faith in the home when Sebastian went missing? No, no ma'am. Does anyone else have a key to your home beside your immediate family? No. No, ma'am. That night, Miss Proudfoot, at midnight when you went to bed, what <clears throat> did you do until midnight? Um, I had been reading a chapter that I needed to, and I had been talking to my husband on the phone. Um, I was fallen asleep on him, so that's when he told me. So, right, there's so much she's added, that. So now, just wasn't she talking to her husband on the phone, she's also reading a chapter of something that she needed for her coursework. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been to college, and I had chapters I had to read for my coursework. And I tell you now, if my husband just spoke to me, even just saying, to want your coffee, he got the look. In my family, we have this thing where you say something to someone. If you don't like, if that person doesn't like what you say, we just look at all. And we call it the look. No, so he would get that look. No, don't fucking disturb me. I'm trying to read this. You know what I mean? So it stays in my brain. So how on earth can you be reading something that is important that you've got to take note of and also be talking to your husband at the same time? I know women are good at multitasking, but come on, love. I'm not that flipping good. So I'm calling her out on that. It was around midnight. He told me to go ahead and put the dogs up and go to bed. And uh, that's what I did. I got to put the dogs um, where they sleep. And then I myself went to bed. Where do they sleep? They have a big pen. A pen, is it inside or outside? Inside. 
inside. Uh, that reminds me of another question. Do you guys have a motion sensor light or lights on the outside of your house? Yes, we do have lights on the outside of our house. Did they activate that night? They're not motion sensor. We uh, have lights. Were they on, on that motion. night? No, okay. Were they on that night? So the lights were out the whole night? Well, I'm done. I'm going to show you some Lights. I'm done. Yours, bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, I'm going to show you. Okay, so far, I'll go in this place. No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. I think I bought about five or six posts per day on my page, depending on what's going on. Uh, oh, God. Coming to it. I'm coming to it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I mean, I am. Oh, God. Well, I'm done. There, set. So, what are those two lights there? Oh. Why are these two lights? Someone told me they was like the um, the lights on the house. Why? Right. And then subject one, and then all of a sudden subject two comes in, disappears. But what are these lights here? Being as there's no lights on on their house. And they said their garbage lights are on. But they're not on. Oh. So subject two has come back into the scene. Subject one is left. Or gone off out the camera range, put it that way. But, but then they said after that, but that's where it finishes. After that, um, Oh, let's share this again. After that, when those two lights disappeared off the screen, after that, the one light subject two come back on the screen and started heading towards the house again. But they don't show that bit. They cut off. Once that subject two goes off the screen, that's when it cuts off. So please, can someone tell me those are the, uh, like the lights you have on the outside of your house? Because I think, what are those lights? Are they car lights? You know what I mean? I weren't sure. And someone said, no, they're the uh, outside lights that you have on the outside of your house. And they said they had no lights on. Yes, ma'am. We don't typically turn the floodlights on. That's it. Were there any lights outside the house on at all? Just my little um, solar lights that we have in the garden. There's yep. two lights on the side of the house above the garage that are on at all times. Oh, yeah, those are on. Oh, there's a light above the garage that's on at all times? There's two, yes, ma'am. Okay, so those lights were on? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, the reason I'm... How did he know? He wasn't there. So how would he know those lights were on? They're on now, because we've seen photos of the house after they've gone off. 
got all that and dance out dance city as we say. The lights are on now. But how did he know they weren't they were on or not? He wasn't there. I'm asking is because I heard you say earlier, Mr. Proudfoot, that your neighbors have been very, very forthcoming with their ring camera info. And I was yes, trying sir. to determine if any lights were on, what, if anything, they may have caught. But I understand from your previous interviews that nothing of any evidentiary value was caught. And also, in another statement you gave, I understand that the video of the two flashlights, and I'm saying that with air quotes, that's not exactly what that was at all. We now don't believe that two flashlights were observed around your home. Is that correct? Yes. BS, they were flashlights. I don't care what anyone said. They were flashlights. Correct. <clears throat> okay. Question regarding your vehicles. Uh, Ms. Proud, what make and model do you drive? I drive a um, Infinity SUV. Year? 2017. And, sir, what do you drive? I drive a uh, diesel truck, Chevrolet. Year? Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it's a 2021, I think. So your Infinity SUV was parked in the garage or outside the garage that night, Miss Proudfoot? In the garage. In the garage. And Mr. Proudfoot, your vehicle was on location in Memphis. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So there's only one car at the home. Is that right? There was actually a, a work vehicle in the driveway at the time as well, but it hasn't moved. We can't just, we can't give out that information because we don't have permission from her work. Look at her face. Look at Nancy's face. It's like, what? I don't understand that. What? <laughs> about the make and model of the vehicle I have a work van that was also parked in the driveway why is that uh, if it's out in the driveway where people can see it why is that privileged information we just don't have permission from her company to divulge that information have you asked no ma'am we have not you can see her face going thinking a little brain going around going what the hell? What planet have these two come from? Nobody's asked us so that, that question. Was... Okay, so you have a work van. Um, question to you, Ms. Prophet, what do you do for a living? I am an installation technician. Note as you said, installation technician. Not a home security insulation technician. That night, was the work van blocking your driveway? Could someone go in and out of your driveway? The van is parked at the back of my driveway, so someone can pull in, yes. Got it. Do you park your Infinity SUV in the garage or outside the garage? In the garage. In the garage. Do you have a an automatic garage door? With a clicker. Right. Uh, do you leave that up or down at night? Down. Could anybody lift it up? Like, is there an on and off button outside, or do you have to know a code or have the clicker to open it? You'd have to know the code or have the clicker. Does Sebastian know the code? Not to the garage door, but to the man doors. 
not to the garage door, but to the house door? Regular door, yes. So is there a code to get in your home or do you use a regular key? There's a code. And he knows that code? Yes, ma'am. Question. I, I'm just trying to figure out how he would have gotten out or if somebody came into the home. Could they have gotten through the garage door? No, unless they know the code or had the clicker, which they did not. Do you lock your doors at night? Yes, ma'am. Could he have left on his own through those doors? He could, yes, ma'am. But I heard in another interview where Mr. Proudfoot said he was not a, quote, wanderer. He didn't wander around. He had never left the home before on his own. Is that right? Correct. We haven't had issues with him running or um, taking off in the past. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions regarding the doors. Do you have any home surveillance, anything at all that would have given us an idea or a clue if the door had been opened or not, or a window? Not directly from our house. Well, then from where? Uh, that's what we were hoping that uh, neighborhood ring cameras and may have picked something up. Gotcha. I want to go back to that night. You said you were up till midnight. You were reading something. What were you reading? A chapter for school. A chapter for school. Are you in school? I was. Yes, ma'am. I've since dropped my classes for the time. What are you studying? Business administration. DeVry. So that night you go to bed at midnight after you've been talking to Mr. Proudfoot on the phone. You put the dogs away in a cage, a crate inside the home, and you go to bed. Did you check on Sebastian at that time? I did not. Okay. Do you normally? Not typically. It, since he's gotten older, I've not been checking on him as frequently throughout the night because normally he's, you know, he's good to go in his room once he goes to bed. Earlier, you had stated you heard a noise in his room before you went to bed. What time was that? Around 10 o'clock. 10 p.m. What did it sound like? Just a thud. A thud. You stated that you said, look, I don't care what you're doing in there. Go to bed. Is that right? I was on the couch, which is near his room. And I said, uh, Bubba, did you fall out of the bed? And he said, no, ma'am. And I said, well, whatever you're doing in there, knock it off and go to sleep. Something else is just added. Sydney, I put in the fact that she spoke to Sebastian. Because everyone was staying in the chat and on their YouTube channel. Well, wow, what's wrong with going up and knocking on your door and just saying, you okay in there? I think okay. Because if everything's okay, they're going to come back and go, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. Right. And I don't want no wise guy in America. I know you use ma'am. And stir a lot over there. Now, over here, if someone calls me mum, so if they go to the shop and go, and they go, have a nice day, mum. I look at them. And I, and I go, I'm not the flipping queen. Please don't call me mum. And many times I've been on the phone to complain about something calling me, and it's been in the USA and they keep going, we'll get onto that ma'am for you. I'm going, don't call me ma'am. Call me by my name, Mrs. Whatever, right? But don't call me ma'am. I'm not the flipping queen. So over here in the UK, the only people they call ma'am is like the queen, yes ma'am, or a DCI. 
detective chief inspector, right? Or get or get out. You know what I mean? But otherwise, it's by your surname. So you heard his voice at 10 p.m. Yes, ma'am. Right. Do you have any idea what the sound actually was? I do not know. If he were to go out his window, what would he step on? Mulch and, and um, bushes. Did you say mulch or mush? Mulch. 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 Okay. Got it. Um, has he ever gone out the window before? No, ma'am. Is his home, is his room on the front of the house or the back of the house? Front. Front. Do any of your neighbors ring cams point toward your house? Could they pick that up? up? They do, but um, it's so dark that they can only see it. Right. Now, some YouTubers I was talking about this, and they pulled up some video. I think it's JLR done. I couldn't find it. So I, I thought, I can't show it, but I can talk about it. Right? Apparently, as you drive past their house, they've got some very small bushes. Right? Not big bushes. And they're not that close to the wall. They're away from the wall a little bit. So, yes, he could have got out of that window without trampling any of those bushes. I know I could. So I know a 15-year-old could get out one of them windows without trampling those bushes. They're not close up by the wall. There's a gap between the bushes and the wall, and they're not very big bushes. After it gets so dark at night, they can only see certain things where there's light. I thought there were the two lights on. On the opposite side of the house. Okay. Can we talk about Sebastian's shoes? Why are you convinced Sebastian left without shoes on? Or are you? Well, the reason that that came about is because all of his shoes are accounted for inside the house still. Are you positive? I'm positive. How do you know what clothes he was wearing? Uh, the clothes that we described are the ones I saw him in when I when he went to bed. That morning, you woke up at 6 o'clock. Is that the normal time you wake up? Yes, ma'am. Are you a heavy sleeper? Off and on. Do you take any medication at night that would make you sleep? No, ma'am. But you heard nothing. I'm sorry, but I'm on medication, right? And I have to take one tablet. Well, I've got to take it now, actually, right? And it's to help me sleep, right? And believe me, it does, right? But when I've got my grandson or my granddaughter here, I hear when they get out. Like my grandson, if he's on, that, on his bunk, I hear him get off that bunk. And I hear my granddaughter get out of her bunk. And she's on the bottom bunk. And I hear her getting, in, getting out. Right? And so I'm on and off with my sleep. But I kind of wake up then move around into a different position and then I'm back to sleep. But as soon as my grandkids wake up or I um, start moving about on the way. My grandson thinks he can sneak past me sometimes. Like if he's been in my bed, right? And you try and sneak past me. And he'll get to the bottom of my bed and I'll go, where are you going? Just go to the toilet. Okay, remember to turn the light off when you come back. So he does. Goes to the toilet, comes straight back. Sometimes he'll sleep in his own bed, sometimes he'll sleep in his bed, but then he ends up in mine. Right? So that's how it goes. And I don't mind. I like that 
at the moment. It's still only six, so I'm making the most of it because in a few years' time, maybe a year's time, he won't want to be with his gran. You know what I mean? I'll miss that then. So, and I'm on medication that makes me sleep to the point that when I get up in the morning, if I get up before, say, 10 o'clock in the morning, I can't, well, I can't function anyway because I can't sleep through till 10 in the morning. And then I get up and I'm refreshed because I have had some sleep, but I'm still, oh God, it takes me like two hours. The other day I was going out for a meal with my son and my daughter-in-law and her family, right? It took me all afternoon to get ready. And I mean all afternoon. Where before I could say, right, we've got to be out of here at five. Oh, we've got to be out of that place for five. Leave here at half four. Okay. And I could get up at half three, half three, start getting ready and be ready by half four within the hour. Even within half an hour, I can be showered, dried, dressed, makeup on, and out the door. Now it takes me literally a whole day to get ready because my motivation is not there no more. I've got no motivation to do anything. But as I said, I take medication and I know when my grandkids are awake. I did not know. So we know he is alive and well at 10 p.m. at 6 a.m. He's gone. You say he's never left before. Is that right? Correct. He's never run off before. And I could I confirm where was his bio dad at the time he went missing? I believe he was at work in Nashville. He was. Had there been any family argument or altercation? prior to him going missing no ma'am i'm going to have to disagree there i think there was i think there was some altercation or disagreement or some argument on the sunday night right and that thumping around you heard she said she heard perhaps that was him trashing his bedroom because he's having some sort of like meltdown And Mr. Prophet, when did you leave town? Early February. So you had been gone for days before he went missing. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Had you visited home since you left? You said from when I initially left. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I, I came home February 26th, the morning I was told that he was missing. From the time that you left for the job in Memphis to February 26th, did you visit the home? Yes, ma'am. When? Uh, I was home. I can't give exact dates. Um, law enforcement has told me not to provide exact dates, but I had been. I don't know why they can't give the dates that he was at home. I really don't understand that. Home um, multiple times prior to February. Um, and then I left early February and then didn't come back till February 26th, the morning he was missing. So you were not home from the time you left early February till Feb 26. Is that right? Correct, ma'am. Where were you living in Memphis? I have an RV trailer that I stay in at an RV park. RV park. Okay. Following back up on that morning, you search the home as Pridefoot. Then you get in your vehicle and you start searching. Did Sebastian yeah. know how to drive? No, ma'am. Was your car in the same location when you woke up that morning as it was the night before? Yes, ma'am. Has your car been searched by police? Multiple times, yes, ma'am. 
Uh, have scent dogs looked at your car? Yes, ma'am. So your car is in the same place. You get in the car, you start looking in the neighborhood for him. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Then you call Mr. Proudfoot, right? I believe I was already on the phone with him at that point. Okay. Question. Who called 911? I did. You did. Yes, what time? Uh, without looking at a call, I can't give you the exact time, but on or about uh, 620. And had you guys been talking on the phone before 6 a.m. or did you initially call Mr. Proudfoot at the time you realized Sebastian was gone? I called him when I realized Sebastian was gone. Have you guys been out looking for Sebastian? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Lawyer, lawyer, pants on fire. We're given information that you guys have left the home. Is that true? Oh, this is a corker. Yes, ma'am. Why? I'm going back to work. You're going back to work. What about? Well, I thought you weren't. I thought your job was up in the air. So, have you got a new job? Fair enough if you have. And uh, I suppose I can understand you not wanting to tell people where you're working. Because you don't want to lose this job, do you? That you, Miss Prophet. No, I'm not going back to work. Not yet, at least. Did you leave the home also, Miss Proudfoot? Yes, ma'am. Why? To accompany my husband going back to work and then I'm coming back. Okay, when will you be back? Do you know yet? No, not yet. Are you concerned about being away while the search is ongoing? Absolutely, I am. Then why are you going? Because my son could be anywhere and we're looking everywhere and anywhere. You're not looking though. You're not. You stop saying that. You're not looking. Seth, the father is, but you're not. I've got a question for you. Yes, I want to find out about Mr. Proudfoot hitting Sebastian with a here we go now I, I'll let this one through or I'll try and let it go through without stopping it I'll try the belt what happened uh that was actually several years ago um and it to was Mr. Proud several years ago how long have they been married I know they've only been married two years so if that's the case, he, they were living together before they got married, which is fair enough. You know what I mean? Um, but why was he disciplining your son when he wasn't even a stepfather, if that's the case? If you've only been married two years, and this happened about three years ago, which I don't believe, I'd like to see the paperwork on that. Foot, to Mr. Proudfoot, to Mr. Proudfoot. Yes, Mr. Proudfoot, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were asking, Katie. Um, Sebastian got in trouble. He got, got, got caught lying. And we asked, I had asked him, I said, hey, you know, you got to have a punishment for this. He says, yes, sir. And I said, okay. So I gave him a swat with a belt buttocks on the outside of his clothes one spot what a load of bs you told us 
you gave him a swat of that belt because he hadn't got his belt on you. Right? You asked him where his belt was. You, he said he hadn't got it. So you swatted him. You hit him with the belt. And then he went to school and he told someone at school. And that's when DCFS was called in and done a home visit. What did he lie about? The, honestly, I don't remember at the time, but it was probably something dealing with school because that's majority where his issues lie. Did he have other issues at school? Have you heard anything positive come out of their mouths about Sebastian? I haven't. I haven't heard one positive thing come out of their mouth about that lad, Sebastian. Sebastian, Drake, Wayne, Rogers. I think I got it right, not Wayne, Drake. Yes, yeah, Sebastian, Drake, Wayne, Rogers. Not one positive word from them. Cool. Some behavioral stuff, but nothing too crazy. What kind of behavioral stuff? Um, he has a hard time. Uh, he's like awkwardly socially like blending in with students. So it's a little, he's trying to figure out how to do it, but respecting people's space, he gets a little too close. Um, and then kids don't really accept that too much. So it kind of causes an issue. Um, but he'll not stop and he continues on. So then it causes an issue. And instead of being honest about it, he, he'll lie like, no, I didn't. Okay, Sebastian. Lying about was that the first time? Was that? Well, yeah. To me, that's like any child. I didn't do it. I didn't do it, mom. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, I didn't do that. Why? Is that... But is it that bad enough to punish him with a belt? Is it? No. Because... Sebastian was 15 with a mind set of a... I see... I think now I heard him say between a 12 and 13 year old, right? Him go, going into someone's personal space is like the normal for him, right? It's just normal. Like you have some children who like to touch, touch people. Touch, like I heard something the other week about someone they got at the uh, swimming pool or something and this little boy came running up to her and he kept touching her and touching her legs and whatever. This woman didn't turn around and get her funny with this lad. She gave him a hug. She gave this lad a hug. Right? Because autistic children behave in different ways. Right? My grandson is on the spectrum. The one with my daughter. Now he's not the touchy feely one. No, it's like he does like his personal space. So I could you imagine someone like Sebastian coming up to him and he'd be he, that would bother him. Right? But I remember once I come here to visit. It was a year ago on Mother's, Mother's Day a year ago. And it was a surprise visit. And um, when they turned up, my son, his wife, and their two children was with him, with them. So my other grandson is very loud, very loud. Now, Vincent isn't used to it, right? He's not used to all that loud, loud noise around him. Because at home, it's just him, his mom, and his dad. So I sat down by him, I said, Vincent, do you know all the children at your school, in your class like that, who are loud? He went, yeah. I said, well, that 
That's just like Ellis. It's just loud. Where you're quiet, Ellis is loud. I said, you just got to accept him for who he is. Like you accept your friends at school, you've got to accept Ellis for who he is. Do you know who was fine after that? He was fine. You don't have to punish a child for lying. Is that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt? Yes, ma'am. The one and only time, actually. Liar! When was this? Uh, years ago, ma'am. Any idea how many? Three, ten, one? Uh, <laughs> it, it probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a belt? That did not turn. That did not turn into a CPS request, uh, service call. Yes, it did. You told us on Smiley's Smiley's will with the interview you did on there. You said that he he hadn't got his belt on him, so. When he did go and get his belt, or he hadn't put his belt on. So because he hadn't put his belt on, right, you used the belt on him. He then went to school, told someone at school, that I'm mandated to report this, so DCFS has come to your home. And apparently you said that the DCFS worker said to Sebastian, that he was, that Diggy understands that it is uh, uh, wrong to lie. Now that is, and something else was said to him as well. I can't remember what you said was said to him, but something else was said to Sebastian. It put the fear of flipping God into that child. Now that, that DCFS worker did say that, that DCFS worker needs to betting fat because you don't put the fear of God into a child especially a special needs child so don't lie there were other CPS reports right were they regarding your other child there is one in regards to my daughter that I know of out in New Mexico with my ex-wife and myself what happened um, uh, at the time, uh, my ex-wife had fled to New Mexico with my daughter. We we're going through a custody and a divorce case at that time. And at the time when I'd call and try to check in on my daughter, I could never get re reach my ex-wife at that time. So a welfare check was requested. Uh, law enforcement told me to call CPS if I had concerns. So I called CPS. Law enforcement did make a welfare call, and that was it. Then how does that turn into a CPS complaint against you? I have no idea, ma'am. There's a lot of misinformation out there right now in regards to my New Mexico case that actually mm -hmm. has... No idea. Please go back on the internet. Go get onto YouTube and go to Smiley's World. And watch that interview you did with her. Watch it. Because you're the one putting that information out there. Not us. You are. There's no relevance to the, the Sebastian case. Then was there even a CPS complaint against you in New Mexico? Uh, not, that, not that I am aware of. Um, and my attorney and myself are well educated on my my case and there's nothing that we know of was there a tro taken out against you regarding yes, your daughter uh not a tro but a tpo a temporary protective order why was that taken out uh so in regards to that case uh my ex-wife had a TPO put against her in in Tennessee at the time. 
when we went to court, that got dissolved. I was ordered to hand my daughter back over to my ex-wife at the time. She gets in a truck. She floods to New Mexico. Two days later, she files one in retaliation. Is it still in place? No, ma'am. That was dropped within. I heard she put a TPO on him a week, about a week or so after Sebastian went missing. I think two weeks of it being put in place. <clears throat> I've got a question about the belt incident. You're telling me that was the only time that you ever hit Sebastian with a belt. Yes, ma'am. Liar. And you're also telling me that did not make it to CPS? No, ma'am, that did not. Yes, it did. Question. Yes, ma'am. Regarding Fate's furniture. Now, this is something I didn't know about this, what they're going to talk about now. I never knew about this. Yes, a few days after Sebastian goes missing, did you replace furniture in Faith's room? No, ma'am. I have not replaced any furniture in my daughter's room. Is there any new furniture in the home? Yes, ma'am. There's a bed that was given to me, and it's currently in my garage. Has anything been taken out of the home? No, ma'am. I was curious about a statement that Ms. Proudfoot made earlier that canine dogs hit on the barn around the home and near a retention pond. Did that happen? I'm not sure about the barn, but the retention pond, yes. Because law enforcement says the dogs did did not hit, but Miss Proudfoot a, says they did hit around the retention pond. So there's been a lot of miscommunication in regards to what is and what is not uh, to help clear that up. Um, law enforcement has actually spoken directly with me, showed me a few things. What I can tell you is there from day one, there was five dogs that started the uh, scent for the search. And then after that, that, from the next eight days out from that, there have been dogs from all over the country that have come in and done searches and had scent hits in various locations. Um, but I would say the, a certain percentage of them tend to go toward the same spot, which would have been a retention pond. So the law enforcement dogs did not hit on the retention pond. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying they did. There was at least three that I know for a fact that did hit on the retention pond. And the pond has been drained, correct? And there was nothing there? Yes, ma'am. They have walked it, drained it, and there's nothing. The, the retention pond was only knee deep anyways. On one occasion, Mr. Proudfoot, you stated that you and Mrs. Proudfoot have been, quote, vetted and cleared of foul play. That was stated on Chronicles of Olivia. Is that true? What do you mean by that? Yes. So after working with law enforcement of all agencies, um, they have actually told us that there is no foul play, no the various issues we've been cleared um, of all wrongdoing. We are working extremely cooperative with all law enforcement agencies uh, at any point in time that they've called, come to the house, uh, anything. Was Sebastian angry or upset before he disappeared? No, ma'am. Not, not to my knowledge. What is your theory about where is Sebastian? I wish I knew where he was, to be honest. I, your theory, your theory. I think it's possible that someone has my son. 
First of all, she says he walked out of the house and away from the house. He just walked away. That's what she's been saying all the way along. He just walked away. Now she's saying she believes someone's got her son. And never changed to the story. I hope law enforcement is watching these videos. They do. I really do. Because like I said the other day, we're picking up on these uh, inconsistencies. They should be picking up on them. And they should be going red flag. Big red flag. Why? Because I feel like if he had been close to the house or had walked off that we would found him by now with as many people as we had searching. Have you checked his social media? He doesn't have social media. Have you checked his phone? His phone has been thoroughly checked, yes ma'am. Have you handed your phones to police, both of you? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am, we have. Has police searched your all of your devices, your laptop, your iPad, everything? Everything, yes ma'am. Other than you, Miss Proudfoot, who is the last person that saw or heard Sebastian alive the Sunday before he went missing? Uh, two of his aunts, um, a cousin, and um, the staff where we had dinner. Right. Now, she added in the uh, cousin or niece. I think it was in the... Um, Third interview. What is it? The second interview. Can't remember. Now she's added in two aunts and the people at where they had dinner. And that was at BJ's the night before or the bowling alley? So BJ's, and then we went to the bowling alley, and then after the bowling alley, we went to dinner before coming home. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said you went to BJ's. Then you come home because you had some groceries, like snacks and all that lot. Put that lot away. Then you left again to go to the bowling alley. And then after the bowling alley, you went for dinner. I want to follow up again on the dogs hitting. Earlier, Ms. Proudfoot had stated the dogs hit around the house, the barn, and at the retention pond. Is that correct? I don't know about the barn, uh, the barn but I do know that they did track to the pond, yes. Did the dogs also hit around the house? Yes, yes ma'am. On the outside of the house? Yes, yes ma'am. Were they scent dogs or cadaver dogs? They brought in uh, both cadaver and uh, tracking dogs. Which dog hit? A cadaver dog or a scent dog? Scent dog. It's all been scent dogs that have hit. Cadaver dogs have not hit on anything that we know of. What do you believe Sebastian was wearing when he disappeared? And would that have been what he slept in? Yes. So the clothes, the the black sweatpants with the white stripes and the long sleeve black shirt, that is what he went to bed in. Um, and the reason that I believe he was still wearing those clothes is because when we searched, I did not find those clothes in the house. So I have to assume that that's what he was still wearing. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you say that's what he wore when he went to bed? Yes, ma'am. Joining us right now, in addition to Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot, the bio mom and stepdad of Sebastian, an all-star panel, first to Brian Trash rejoining us, vice president of the Cajun Navy, who has... Now, this, after he spoke, we're just going to finish because she seems a bit... Mm, about this case, about them. Watch your face. 
joined the search. Brian, thank you for being with us. Who asked you to join the search? Well, we had deployed a team up to Nashville, Tennessee last week um, in response to the, the missing college student, Riley Strain. Um, and uh, we stayed up there until he was found. While we were in the area, we had a lot of people reaching out to us on social media um, saying that there was a young boy who had been missing for several weeks that was only about 20 miles away from where we were. So we, we talked to a few people, got some information and decided to uh, deploy part of our team that was already up there to Sumter County to investigate and see what we could do to help out. You went on your own, were you asked to join? We were asked to join. I'm not uh, sure specifically uh, who some of our people talk to, but we always, we get requests all the time and we'll reach out, we'll try to get either a family member or a close friend of the family, just so we know we're, we're talking to people connected to the family. And, um, and somebody had, um, had reached out and asked, asked us to join since we already had assets so close to Sumner County. Tell me what you have been doing, Brian Trasher, everyone with me, the VP of the Cajun Navy who has joined in. Yes, we'd love to know what you've been doing as well. In the search, you can find them at CajunNavyRelief.com. Brian, tell me what you guys have been doing. Uh, just real for the United Cajun Navy, we're the original uh, group that everybody hears about. There's other groups that use the Cajun Navy. We're the original group. No, you're not. No, you're freaking not. Right? Oh, God. Where is it? It's right up here. Right? Uh, well, I have to say it again. I oh, you know what, I'm not going to keep going through it all because right? No, you know, because Cajun, Cajun Navy 2016 has shown proof they are the original ones. No other organization like that, not even them, were running were doing any relief work during the Katrina uh, incident, weather incident, you are a branch of that. They will not have anything to do with you. Cajun Navy name to try to fundraise off of our efforts. Uh, Cajun... Lawyer, you're trying to fundraise off their efforts of their name. Navy Relief is not uh, affiliated with us at all. We are www.unitedcajunnavy.org. We're, we're the original, we're the real ones. No, you're not. Again, what exactly have you been doing on the search? So we've, we've had uh, a, a canine, our own canine team uh, who was already participating in the search for Riley Strain uh, up there searching around. We've uh, talked with the, uh, the lead investigator with, with uh, Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, uh, Agent Simmons. Um, we've talked a lot with him and trying to co coordinate efforts because we always try to coordinate with law enforcement to make sure we're not getting in the way, duplicating efforts or, or uh, putting out any... Uh, you know what, uh, Mr. Trasher, let me just cut the chase here. Isn't it true that this weekend, pursuant to your search, that cadaver dogs hit in an area that had been closed off because of a prior hurricane and it is on federal property. Bones and other items were found at that time. I found that very odd as it would relate to Sebastian. Even if it was Sebastian, his body would not have been skeletonized at this time. Can you tell me now that what was found over the weekend is not connected to Sebastian? Yes, no. No. Not no, that, connected that, to that hit, that Sebastian. Hit, that hit was, yeah, that, that's correct. That hit was not connected to Sebastian. Okay. Joining me also, in addition to Brian Trasher, who has been leading the Cajun Navy in its search for, for Sebastian. Uh, hold on, Brian. 
other than those hits, have there been any other dog hits in and around the home or elsewhere? Uh, not from our canine team. <clears throat> I'm very concerned, Brian, as you can imagine, because LA law enforcement has stated there were no canine hits outside the home, which I find very, very disturbing. Uh, because if he had gone outside, particularly barefoot, there would definitely have been a scent trail. Now we're hearing from the Proudfoots that there was a hit around that um, retention pond. How far is that pond from your home? Mr. Proudfoot? Uh, less than probably half a mile if you walk the whole path. It's nearer. If you go around the main entrance of the main road, that construction site is nearer to your home than his school is. So his school is 0.6 miles away. 0.6. Then that construction site is a lot less than 0.6. Is it through wooded area? Would he have had to walk through the woods to get there? No, ma'am. You can actually walk either the main road or the subdivision. So the construction site is a subdivision, a uh, new addition that's being built. And they have a road that's going to be tied into our subdivision. So you could actually walk up that way or you could walk to the main road and walk into it. Did Sebastian ever sleepwalk? No, ma'am. So he would have had to leave the house undetected by Katie and walk all the way to that retention pond. Did the dogs follow the trail a half a mile? Yes, ma'am. They followed the trail all the way to that retention pond? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's very curious as they are saying the dogs didn't pick anything up. Um, back to you, Brian Trasher. Did you guys search anywhere other than that federal property where the false positive was? Yes, no. No. Joining me is Courtney Lasky, uh, high profile behavior analyst, autism expert, chief clinical officer with Little Starts Therapy. I'm sorry, but I don't trust anything this guy has to say i really don't and to be honest with you i'm not going to go for the whole interview if you want to see the whole interview then the link will be if you haven't already seen it the link is in the description well the link to nancy grace page is in the description right um because i've heard her talk about this case before this woman is just more interested about, she tells us that there is, the law enforcement has said there's no, in fact, we will watch that bit. I think she's going to, no, she's coming on to her, hold on. Let's see when we get, no, get off in, get off in. There. Um, start there. He didn't get invited, but had he been, yes. We have had playdates in the past. Would he go there on foot? No, ma'am. Uh, uh, joining me now is Lauren Conlon, investigative journalist, host of the Outlier podcast, host of Corruption, What Happened to Grant Solomon. And you can find her at laurenconlon.com. Lauren, thank you so much for being with us. What can you tell me about that stretch of road, if anything, between Sebastian's home and that retention pond? Well, look, Nancy, I mean, I think like everything else about this case, it is very confusing because the public hasn't heard much from the police. We haven't heard much from the Proudfoots, obviously, when it comes to that, or Seth Rogers. And now I'm learning a lot here as I hear Chris Proudfoot say, okay, we can't speak about this because of law enforcement. And now with the Cajun Navy coming in, I think a lot of us are very excited that they are going to basically canvas this road. And they are actually telling civilians to hang back, 
Nobody needs to search this anymore. You need to stop. You need to stop helping and let us work with law enforcement and take over. Now, I called the Sumner County Sheriff's Office yesterday because of all the misinformation going around. And I got to be honest with you. They didn't even know what was going on with this road, with the recreation search. They were either very elusive or they were very confused. But either way, it's very concerning because the people, as well as myself, I don't live in Tennessee. I cover a lot of Tennessee. We are very concerned for Sebastian. We are very concerned. And so, okay, so I, I, let I, me just stop you right there, Miss Collin. Miss Collin, everyone is concerned. But let me remind everyone that law enforcement is under no duty at all to tell us or anybody else, including the Proudfoots, anything. They are not representing the Proudfoots. They are representing justice. And they will do what they have to do. The fact that they're not giving us a blow by, by blow is their business. Does it mean they're stymied? I don't know. Does it mean they know more than we think they do? I don't know the answer to that. But just because they're not releasing an ongoing investigative file is not a concern to me. At this juncture, I am collecting facts in the best way I know how. Now, regarding that route from the Proudfoot home to the retention pond, is it your understanding, Lauren Conlon, that there were no hits by scent or cadaver dogs along that route? Correct, Nancy. It is my understanding there were no hits from the dogs. It is very confusing. It's confusing. You know, sometimes, Lauren, when we try to put together a puzzle, but we're missing a few pieces and we don't know what piece we're missing, you can't put the puzzle together. We're missing. We're missing things from this puzzle. And right now I'm on a fact finding mission. I am pointing the finger at no one because I want to find Sebastian. We are. Well, I am. And until I'm told different, I will stand my ground because I seriously think CP and KP has some knowledge in the disappearance of Sebastian. Uh, I want to go to Dr. Jory Clausen joining me. Uh, and, and guys, again, please, Proudfoots, uh, Trasher, Lasky, <laughs> Conlon, jump in if you have a thought or you want to contradict, because a lot of this is elusive. We don't know everything. Uh, to you, Jory Cross, in joining us, uh, former law enforcement, now faculty, St. Leo University, uh, very well known psychologist and author of Operation SOS. You can find him at drjory.com. Dr. Jory, thank you for being with us. Many people have made much of the fact that when an interview, the proud folks do not look at the camera, they look away, they don't cry, and they don't seem upset. Now, that may or may not mean anything. People can be very upset, crying, screaming, cursing. They may show no emotion at all. They may be numb. By the time interviews are happening, I'm very different. When I talk about my fiance's murder or I talk about my dad's death, I still cry, even when I swear I'm not going to. But everyone reacts differently. I'm going to throw this directly to Mr. and Mrs. Proudfoot. Much has been made. I'll ask you. You very often look away. Don't look at who's asking you questions show no emotion. Much has been made of that. And I'd like to hear your response. I'm not judging one way or the other. I'd like to hear your response. So the fact of not looking at the camera all the time is because a picture of my son is sitting beside me and I'm honestly, I'm looking at him. As far as the crying thing, I have been crying off and on nonstop for a month. Many people have asked me why did Miss Proudfoot not call 911 immediately? And here's your chance to answer that. 
because by the time I realized my son was missing and I called my husband at that point, I was hysterical. I was at the point where I couldn't even form words anymore. And my husband is the one who remained calm enough to call them. Hey, to be honest I'm with you, Miss Grace, the way we live outside of city limits, so you don't call 911 because you get routed to a dispatching hub who asks what's your location, and then they route you to another dispatcher to talk to, to give this story. I cut all of that out and I called straight to the sheriff's department because they have jurisdiction of where. Right. Someone was talking about this the other night. Um, they, they lied. Right. And they said, who on earth, or was it in the morning? I can't remember. I lose all track of time. Who on earth phoned the sheriff's department? Right. Unless you've got their number written down or you know that number off your head, right? You wouldn't. You phone 911 and then they put you through to the sheriff's department, right? Well, they put you through to the dispatcher and then the dispatcher gets on to the sheriff's department, right? Because I swear to God, I couldn't live in in the in the US because we've got no emergency phone numbers here, right? But don't ask me what the young emergency phone number is. I don't know. I don't know. If I had to phone the police, it used to be nine nine nine, and now it's gone nine one one. So if I have to phone the police, I phone nine one one. I don't know the young emergency code uh, phone number. So I'd hate to be in the US where you've got the law enforcement and then you've got the sheriff's, right? Two different departments. And because there's no way I'd be phoning the sheriff unless I had their number on my phone, right? Because there are some cases where people are way out of nowhere, the people of nowhere, and the sheriffs are what they, who deal with their case. So they probably have got their number really in their head. But you've got to spend some, he's at work, don't forget he's at work. So has he got that number? Does he know the number to their sheriff's department? Or did he have to look it up, Google it, and then phone it? In which time it would hit 911 and got straight through to them. Where we live. So sorry that I decided to bypass a few steps and go straight to the source where they responded within 10 minutes of the phone call being made. Miss Proudfoot, that evening, were you drinking? No, ma'am. Had you used any type of drug at all, even OTC, over the counter? No, ma'am. And you had no argument with Sebastian that night? No, ma'am. You stated you put the dogs away into a crate before you went to bed. Is the crate located near the exit, near a door? No, ma'am. Would the dogs have barked if there had been an intruder or if Sebastian had left? The dogs don't typically bark at me and Sebastian because they're used to us. Even if we get up, we come around, they don't typically bark. Um, strangers, they do tend to bark at least for a minute or two to get attention. Uh, but no, ma'am, they don't typically bark at Sebastian and myself or Christopher. I think in the middle of the night, right? With no lights on, yeah? Don't forget, he's come out of his bedroom. Now, his bedroom's on the front of the house. So he's only got to come out of his bedroom, and whatever, and down the hallway a little bit, or whatever, and out the front door. Right? I don't know how it's situated. It looks like the bedrooms are on one side, then you've got the living area, and whatever, and the kitchen maybe at the back. I'm not sure. So you come out of his bedroom and straight round to the front door. 
But I'm sure if those dogs occurred in moving about, they wouldn't know who it was. It's pitch black. There's no lights on. They're not going to know if it's a bastard or a stranger. They would bark. You know what I mean? I've had dogs. I grew up with dogs. And I know that if I walked out down my, out my bedroom, right, just to go to the, and down the stairs or whatever, and I didn't put the lights on, the dog would bark. Because at first you're thinking, he's heard something, so he's going to bark. Yeah? But then, when he sees you, you hear him bark, he goes, shut up, shush. He hears your voice, he'll be quiet. So, that dog does it, those dogs don't know. I, I believe those near the back entrance way, around the back way, well, the kitchen dining area or somewhere like that. So, those are over the other side of the house. Right? I believe. I don't, I can't, I've got to get a map to the inside of their house. Someone's got a video from uh, when the previous owners were selling it. And you know how they do a, a video of the house for viewings, for viewers? <coughs> well, they've got a video. But even on that, it doesn't show you the layout fully of where it looks like the living room is connected to the kitchen area, right? So the bedrooms have got to be on, but then she said the bedroom, to get to her bedroom, you go through the kitchen. Because someone said, to get to Sebastian's bedroom, you've got to walk past the kitchen. So, I don't understand when she said her living room, the sofa is right next, really close to Sebastian's bedroom. Because from what I can see from those pictures, from that video, you've got a living room, and then you, from the living room, you can see like the giant, uh, like um, a breakfast bar with the stones. So you gather that's the kitchen area, and up there is a door. And up there, I believe, is where you go to the bedroom. So I don't know. I'd like to get a, a an inside, like, map thing of the house. Just to show where the bedrooms were, the kitchen was, the living room, the dining room, and all that. What kind of dogs are they? Morkies. Question. Where is their crate located? Uh, in the area near my sunroom. Over by in the kitchen. your son's... Okay, hold on. Is no, it son, outside your son's son. room? No, ma'am. Not, not room. Sebastian's room. Son, yeah. Yes, ma'am. The sun room, and that's not near the door. No, ma'am. Not near the front door. It's near my back door, but not any of the other doors. Yes, from what I've seen, the layout of the home, it is near the back door, and they would have heard someone coming in and out that back door. Correct. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No barking. Do you have a chime or anything on your doors that would alert you to the door opening? No, ma'am. Miss Grace, could I question. jump in for something? Yes, please. And I, I want to follow up with a question yes. regarding Miss Miss Proudfoot's polygraph. But please, Lauren, jump in. Everybody on Thank the you. panel, now is the time to Thank ask you. the Proudfoots any question that may shed light on what has happened to Sebastian. We are not in a judging arena. We are in a fact-finding arena. We can stop, then stop, stop, assimilate stop, stop, the facts stop. and make deductions. Please jump in. Stop, stop. 
Top. Frank. Is this true? Sebastian has been found about 30 minutes ago at the landfill. Trying to find proof. Oh, please, God, no. Right, hold on. I'm going to... Oh, God. Um... Let me just sort some out. I'm going to check. Oh, God. Come on. Right, um... Let's just uh, Sebastian Rogers. Oh. I'm going to I'm just trying to sort this out. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing anything. If that's true, nothing's coming out yet. Oh my God, I have not. Well, Yes and no. But I really was hoping for something different. You know what I mean? For the sake of his father, I was hoping for some a different outcome. So... I don't know. I'm not getting anything, hold on. That can go. That can go. Hold on, I've got some messages in my Facebook. Let's, let's see what people are saying. Um. Oh, come on. This fucking internet. Hold on. Um, nothing's showing up on my mess on the notifications, and normally someone would let me know if they've seen anything like that.
of checking the Facebook pages of his Yeah, the privacy to you only have to say no plus get down to the question. There's nothing coming up anywhere. Oh god, keep back up there. Hey, has a little has that little hey, has that little been found about thirty minutes ago at Linfield? We'll just try and find this out now, Sarah. That's why I stopped what I was doing because I'm trying to find out that what Frank is Frank's trying to get the proof as well. I'm looking on Facebook, I'll look on Twitter. I'm going just type all that down for a minute. Um what's this? This is the group from Sebastian's pain case discussion. If anyone's going to know, it'll be um, Trev, Trev Todd. He tends to find all this information at first. Oh, I'll know. Let's have a look. Um, let's see if I can find that one. No, I'm not even remembering it. Um, What's up on uh, TBI, Facebook, isn't it? And TBI, um, they should know because it'd be... So they haven't put anything up either. TBI haven't put anything up. Where did you hear this from, Sarah? Was it on another live or was it on a news station or something? Now I also heard that EcuSearch were already helping law enforcement. Don't know how true that was. I was going to mention that after that interview. But um, as I said, that interview, the, far, the stepfather, you can't really call him stepfather because he's not a father. He's an owl, an owl. Um, and the mother were very um, more composed, I'd say. He wasn't butting, butting in and taking over the conversation. She looked like she didn't want to be there. And as for that picture, oh, okay, because somebody on here said that he was found at landfill about that. Yeah, Frank had put it up there. I've just seen it, you see it, because I, was, I watched from the back, like, uh, so I've got the full screen. So I don't always see what's going on in chat until I come back into the like the back office part of it. So I was playing that. Yeah, Frank. That was t eleven o'clock he said that. So yeah, five to eleven that, that message come through and I found out about what just gone coming up to five past eleven. I found out. I seen the message, so I'm hoping it isn't. And if if it isn't, then this is cruel. Yeah, I've seen it. It's up on my screen. I've seen it. I've seen the um 
message. Sebastian has been found about 30 minutes ago at the landfill trying to find proof. Yeah, I've seen you. I'm just hoping if this is not Sebastian, then this is just cruel to say this. You know what I mean? To put it out there, for someone to put that out there. But I was really hoping for a better outcome. I was hoping that perhaps he had run the off and without being on his medication, he'd be all over the place. But to be on the landfill, that means if that is true, it's a total rumour. Lady K talks. So just a rumour, total rumour. Because if that was the case, well, would they not have found in the first time? Yeah, I'm hoping he's found alive. But Lady Kay has just said it's a, it's a rumour, just a, a rumour. Nothing confirmation about it. And... Let's just see. Uh, there's nothing coming up on Twitter. But what I will show you, I'll show you this. I was just checking the Facebook group saying Lady K being locked in locked into and not true. No. He probably seen it on a Facebook page as well. Right. So because he said himself he said trying to find proof. So he's looking into it himself. So he's probably seeing on a Facebook page somewhere. And let's have a look at Facebook groups. Uh, uh, What's it be on that one? Oh, right, look at this. <laughs> I said a YouTuber would find them. Right, I said this. Right. And apparently they have. I'll go. No. Facebook, yeah. Right. JLR investigates. 28 seconds ago, why? Uh, this was when it was first posted in screenshot. Christopher Crowfoot spotted at Yogi Bear Campground in Horn Lake, Mississippi, where Sebastian Rogers. How can you leave when your kid's missing? I know, I couldn't. I don't care what people were saying. I really wouldn't care what people said. If you're telling the truth, you've got nothing to hide. So yeah, that's them parked. They've got all their sides out, so they're parked up there. Because they've got all their side bits out. So. Yeah, I thought someone's pulled. I thought he was headed to Memphis for work and she went to accompany him, but we'll be back soon. I understand now it's close by. Thank you all who were respectful and helped me understand. (laughs) 
Can I just correct people? Right? When they went to that landfill in Kentucky, right? That is the landfill where the construction site with their big skips take all their rubbish to the one in Kentucky. The general household rubbish is took to a landfill in Gallatin or something. Right? So if they had if that was true, say it was true that they found his body on the landfill in Kentucky, then it meant his body would have been in one of them skips. Not in one of the household things. So. Right, can anyone see this right? This is about the snake. I can confirm we do still have Sebastian's snake, Rainy, and she's well taken care of. I'm holding out hope to be able to return her to Sebastian. ETA, I feel like it's important to make it clear that there was never a conversation between CP and my husband about them getting the snake back this is a business and cp knew that many of his snakes will be listed will be listed to be sold where my husband husband would be getting those profits this also happened back in august not once was my husband asked to hold on to sebastian's snake so that he could get him back someday not once the only reason my husband knew that this snake was special to Sebastian because he himself told him and my husband said, well, why don't you keep this one? He said, Sebastian looked at Katie and she told him, no. Never once have they reached out on Sebastian's behalf for a visit to see the snake or for a picture or update at all. Well, I don't like snakes, but that's a lovely colouring. That is a lovely colouring. Like the gold and brown. How do we know that's him? That could be anyone. That could be anyone. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, someone just posted, put up here, four days ago this was. Now that the stepdad has gone back to work, I think the bio dad should pay the mum a visit and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I think law enforcement should speak to the mum while he's not there, yes. Why have you not heard more about Sebastian's behaviour and your kids? Exactly. But you see, when 
they talk about Sebastian. Um, I'm, I'll find it later. I'm glad it's not true. I'm so glad it's not true. But that is cruel to put that on a share that on a Facebook group. Christ's sake. I know that his father said he's not a member, he does not have any social network. But there are people who are with him. Right? His family, his colleagues at work, and all that lot too. And that will get back to him. That is just not right. But thank you for that, Lady Kay. You know, what was Frank put it up here on my chat? Further up in the chat. Right, uh, before Sarah come on, just before Sarah mentioned, Frank come up and said Sebastian had been found about 30 minutes ago at the landfill and he said trying to find proof. But like I said, I've been on Twitter and there's, you know, I'm sure if there was something true about it, to be on Twitter and I'm sure all these other whatever I'm gonna stop that I'm gonna take that down because to be honest with you that's coming to an end anyway that is that interview is coming to an end so that interview is coming to an end and it's just mainly See, I picked out several things about that interview. A, how he sat back and he didn't pushing on the conversation and take over the questioning. He knew if he'd done that, well, look at what she did to Katie when she asked about the bout situation. Katie went to answer and she went, Chris Proudfoot, Chris Proud book, and she said it three times because she did say, I want to ask about the incident with the, I want to talk to Chris about the incident with Chris Proud book, about the incident with the bound. And the mother interjected and she said, Chris Proud book, three times she said his name, right? So, um. If he'd have interjected at any time over Katie, I'm sure she would have said, not having that, not having that. So, so. Once I come off there, I'll be checking the discussion groups. Right, because I'm not finding anything on any of the discussion groups I know. Yeah. Mm. But there are so many discrepancies, like when you say uh like she's added to the story more 
Oh, she said when she heard that thud sound, her sofa is close to his bedroom. Now, I'm sure the living room, unless she's in another part of another room, but from what I could see, the main lounge is. Hold on, I'm just going about go and kill my cat. Come down now. Come on. Right. The main, from the living room, from what I could see on that video, you could see like a breakfast bar area, which is the kitchen area. And you could also see uh, like a dining area. But from what I understand, the bedrooms were on the corridor off the kitchen. Because someone said when she got up in the morning to go and wake Sebastian up at six o'clock, when she said he wasn't in his bed, she thought maybe he was doing breakfast. Well, would they not have would she not have seen him in the kitchen doing breakfast? Because she had to walk past the kitchen from her bedroom. She had to walk past the kitchen to get to Sebastian's room. And from the kitchen, you can see, I think it's either the dining room or the living room and the lounge, and then the dining room's off a bit more. So I don't know. It's hard to say. I need a plan of the, uh, the layout. I wonder if I could get one. I don't mind paying for it. So, um, anything else? Fire station. See, because if, if he had been found, I'll tell you now, it would be on this site. It would definitely be on the TBR. And it's not. And it's definitely not. Uh, I was going to share this with you, right? Now, this guy said, I don't know who true this is. Burton Stags, hashtag Sebastian Rogers. I can confirm that Exu Search has been active in the search with Sebastian Robert Rogers. An Exu Search member tells me they have been working with law enforcement for weeks and continue to do so. From my personal experience, Exu Search, they prefer to work with no publicity. I don't know about that because, oh, hold on. Right, because when they was doing the search with some of Wales, there's uh, people from the news and whatever, and they even went, right, uh, two or three of the members of Extra Search was going for dinner on the night time, one night, and they asked, Dog and Candice to join them. Right? So, them saying they don't like to do searches without the public knowing, it's like the, the new people saw what was going on. They didn't get in the way, but they knew what was going on. So, I don't understand that. But let's hope it's true. Let's hope what that guy there said is true that they have been working with them. Anyway, I've been on here three and a half hours now, longer than I was planning. But that's mainly because of what was said. But anyway, thank you for everyone being here. 
bearing with me. If you like what you're seeing, please hit that like button. If you want, subscribe and be kept updated with all future lives. But please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And once again, I'm going to take this off now. Once again, thank you all for being here. And I will see you. I'm glad you. It went to Tuesday, isn't it? I'll see you tomorrow. So thank you all for being here. Good night.